You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bud, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hi, this is JF from Cataclysm. And you're listening to Bud's Ma'am Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bud's Mayhem Radio Network and staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bud's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bud's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. As always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a huge privilege to welcome JF, guitarist of Cataclysm. Cataclysm will release their 14th full-length studio album entitled Unconquered, September 25th via Nuclear Blast Records. Also, check out their first single entitled The Kill Shot. Also, that video was directed by Scott Hansen of Digital Thunderdome. And let me tell you, folks, 14 albums for a band to put out, that's not not very lot. So that that's a lot of albums and a lot of stuff in their library. And uh, to me, that's that speaks volumes when a band can still put out albums, especially today in today's world, how it is. So, JF, man, welcome to the show and uh, glad to have you on here. Yeah, th- thanks for having me. I'm um, I'm stoked about the this this new album, and we've been doing promotion these past couple of weeks, and it's it's so cool to hear the good comments from everyone across the the board. So it's uh, I- I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. How have you been doing, and what have you been up to during this crazy pandemic, other than talking and promoting the new 14th Cataclysm album, man? <laughs> well, I I run my uh, little recording studio out of my house. So uh, I, I've been busy with that. I do a lot of like mixing, mastering, and, and stuff like that for a bunch of different bands and, and labels. So uh, it's interestingly enough, no bands can tour at the moment, right? So everybody's kind of off the road, but everybody's working on music. So I, I, I got so much job like I never had in my life, and I'm kind of thankful in a way for everything that's happening. <laughs> so because I'm replacing the 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 live income uh, if you will with with the uh, more work in the studio so it's uh, it's been good for me and uh, also I, I get to spend some time with my daughter she's five so she's about to start school in uh, in a few weeks so I, I had the chance to be here in this, or last year uh, home and, and my wife's kind of happy to having me here because usually we're on the road a lot and um, so this year has been different. But it's cool. It's a good break, and uh, uh, I welcome it. But I'm hoping that it opens at some point because uh, I do really miss playing live, and I can't wait to uh, play those new songs on, on the new album live as well and see my my guys. I, I miss them. Uh, we all live in different cities. So uh, uh, I think the last time I, I saw them was when we shot the video, the kill shot. And that was a, And then the, that's when the whole thing went down because – we were over there with, at, at Scott's place and where we filmed the, the thing and uh, we saw the, the news. Uh, the, it was the first time we saw, we heard about the coronavirus and the pandemic and, and uh, it all started there. We flew back home and everything went, uh, went to hell after. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that all this stuff subsides here in the next couple of months, maybe next first of the year, maybe this all stops and, we can get back to normalcy and do what we do best, but uh, it's it's scary times, man, because you really don't know what to believe anymore. Exactly, it's uh, I, I I try to keep an eye on what's going on, but at the same time, uh, like uh, so many things seems unreal, uh, and some like you you, do, you don't know who tells the truth anymore. Like, uh, the, do you believe the science guys, or do you believe the politicians, or it's and I I try to kind of stay away from all that and not think too much because it drives you crazy and there's nothing you can do really so i just go out wear my mask like everybody else and clean my hands uh, as much as i can and that's that's the best i can do but i'm really hoping that some sort of solutions happen or something happens and then everything comes back to normal and, and uh, i'm looking forward to that day 
So Unconquered is Cataclysm's 14th new studio album. How does it feel as a band to have now 14 albums in the Cataclysm library, man? That's crazy. Like, I don't even believe it myself. Like, you wake up one day and you realize, hey, I actually produced uh, 14 albums <laughs> and we've been we've, we've been a band for 30 years and you know the crazy thing is when we started uh, we got signed really early we were fresh out of high school and um and we started this band for for fun as a hobby with with friends and uh got the record deal with nuclear blast records it was in 1992 or 93 i believe and um when we first got signed, there was some important people in the business that told us, uh, guys, enjoy this because it's, it's going to last, last about five years because uh, the genre of music you're playing is going to go out of style and your band's going to be like history after after that. And we're like, oh, OK. And uh, we we started this thing a bit um, uh, in, innocently because we, we, it wasn't the point to to have a business or anything like that we just wanted to have fun and play play music really loud and piss off people and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> do what we do when we're in high school you know and um and we uh, started releasing records and go on the road and and next thing you know we eventually got some sort of uh paycheck out of this and, and, and then things got better and we just love what we do so much we kept on going and uh, looking back it's crazy to, to see uh, everything that was accomplished and um, but I'm, I'm happy I, I'm, we've made we've made a career out of playing music and traveling the world and hanging out with friends <laughs> drinking beer and watching some more cool bands and meeting some some cool people and i am very um, thankful for all that and one of the reason we still have that fire and that um, the, 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 the passion going uh, is that we all love each other like brothers in the band we uh, we fight like brothers as well sometimes but we we all love each other and we can't wait to see each other and do this together uh, it's it's been our, our common passion and common goal and also we uh, we have a lot of respect for what we do so we actually put a lot of effort in the, in the music that we still create today and everything we do with the band because we try to respect the thing that brought all of this uh, that brought all the good things to our lives and and it's uh, it's it's been so cool to have a uh, supporters that supported us all the way through and, and some new kids that keep uh, coming and joining the, the, the Cataclysm family and, and world. And it's uh, it's great to see that uh, I still feel like we're a relevant band after all these years, and I'm not, just happy to be here. So were you guys a little nervous releasing this album in this crazy pandemic, man? Or were you guys just like, no, let's, we've got it done. Let's go ahead and just put it on out. Well, we've been told uh, that we should uh, postpone it to later uh, uh, because uh, the, the the label people were like, uh, such a great record, you guys should wait till next year. They were almost kind of saying, don't waste it this year, next year is better. But we pushed and fought really hard to have a release date this year because this album has been recorded uh, last year and mixed. We finished the mixing in, in December, so... We were already anxious to get it out, and we and we were hoping for a spring release. But then all the, all this happened, and it got pushed, and we fought to have a release date. And finally, September is the is the time. And I I think it's a great timing. I firmly believe we we did the right move because um, people need music right now. They, they need entertainment, and uh, I think it's a great time to release music. And who cares if we lose a little bit of sales because of that aspect of the business uh i think our fans are gonna like what what this album's about and they're gonna through through a word of mouth that they're gonna tell their friends and next thing we know we're i think we're gonna we're gonna do great i'm, I'm convinced we're gonna do great anyways and it won't matter much oh yeah yeah those, those loyal fans man are gonna be there and plus I would say this, and I'll venture out on a limb. I guarantee you guys will probably get some new fans on, on this since this pandemic's going on. Yeah, I, I I would think so too. I think people are looking for uh, things. They're bored. They're home. Like a lot of people are out of work, but they're still. Uh, even if times are tough, you're still looking for that release and that like 
those of us who metal heads were all like, I'm always my, myself included. I'm always like searching for new stuff, new things to uh, yeah. feel the feel this feel this passion that I have, and uh, I'm always looking at what other bands are doing and what kind of crazy riffs and and music they're coming up with. So. Uh, Uh, and also working the recording studio, I, I hear I work on some of the stuff that's upcoming, and I I see some new things, and I, it keeps me excited, and and that's that's what I like in life. So I I think uh, there's a lot of people like me and uh, and like us that that thinks like that, and the, uh, the because the pandemic is here, it won't uh, it won't stop uh, anyone from uh, living their their passion. What's impressed or excited you the most about making the album Unconquered, if anything, JF? What, what sticks out the, the most for you? The one thing we did different this time is, um, like the, the past few albums, we kind of wrote together as a band. Uh, but the, this last album, it was mostly me and the singer, uh, Mauricio. We used to write a lot together when we first started this band. And uh, we kind of went back to the way we used to do things, and we we realized we still have that sort of magic chemistry happening when we write together, and and that was cool. That was a uh, some something uh, nice about this album. So it, we're kind of uh, rekindling with our our roots, and uh, at the same time we brought in a lot new uh, newer fresh elements to the the melting pot. Uh, especially, I made a switch from playing a six string guitars to seven strings on this record. So it brought a whole new level of heaviness with, with like the super low tuning that we can things and textures and sounds we can do before or achieve before on the previous records that the, it brings a whole new fresh element. And I think uh, these elements, plus we use a different uh, mixer. Uh, we use Colin Richardson in, in the UK uh, to do the job. It, it was, Um, one of the one of our favorite mixer because he worked on some of our favorite records and the guy was retired and um, we asked him to kindly to to work with us and he was uh, all about it and he we had to rent a studio because the guy doesn't own the studio and uh, it was a a lot of work but I think that he brought a magic touch as well to this record and, and Plus, plus uh, what we achieved musically, everybody gave 250%. It was kind of like all the stars were aligned for, for a great album. And uh, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to release it and get feedback from everybody. Are there any tracks staying out more to you than any right now on the album? I, I don't much change every time you guys listen to it or you talk about it. But for you personally, are there any that stand out? Maybe. Uh, I like the song uh, Underneath the Scars a lot. Uh, it was one of those songs that it just came came out like so quickly. I, I we I was sitting in Morcio's basement and I picked up the guitar and we started talking about idea ideas and and uh, putting riffs down and and having having a beer in between all that. And <laughs> uh, three hours later, there there it was the song and we're like yes. <laughs> It just it just came out just like that out of the blue and and I think it's one of the best ones on the on the record. It's funny because some some songs you put so much uh, blood and sweat and effort to to make sure everything's great. The the arrangements and the and like you nitpick everything and it takes days, but the, this one just uh, an evening uh, of, of work. I wouldn't even call it work. It was really a, a fun moment. And uh, it, it just happened. It's here, and uh, I, I really love that song. Now I know creating these new songs d does it still challenge or push you guys to come up with something new and, and fresh for Cataclysm? I mean, is it still pushing you outside your all's boundaries? Uh, oh, of course. I mean, uh, for me uh, personally, uh, from from my point of view, I think uh, writing music is is the most exciting part of being in the band uh, uh, because. I want to push myself uh, guitar wise on on uh, on all levels on the songwriting wise and I, I always want to keep uh, relevant as as a band because I don't want to keep rehashing the same stuff we do for like 20 years I think uh, I think at some point it's 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 rewarding when you're creative and you achieve like something exceptional and uh, I think Our supporters, the, the band, the, those who's, who've been following the band for a while, they, they know that we always put out quality records and we always 
push ourselves to the max. So uh, it's part of the the thing. And uh, I, uh, I know for me, it's 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 challenging and it's rewarding when when you're successful at it. And uh, I uh, I really love that part. Was there a song that you guys were working on on this album that totally ended up sounding differently or took a major turn than what it started out as? Oh yeah, there's a song called uh, uh, it's it's uh, called Simply Stitches, and it, it's funny because it, it's one of those songs we wrote, uh, and um, I, I didn't even think he would make the record honestly because uh, we when we were at the point where we were starting to things were taking shape and we had like six seven songs done. Uh, I was listening to Stitches. And I was like, I don't think it's good enough for for the record. Everything is so good, and I I wasn't a fan. And Mar- Mauricio told me like, no, no, wait, so, like let, let's listen to it and hear my ideas. And then he started singing over it. And then he was like, okay, l- let's move this part here and 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 move around a little bit stuff. And then I came up with with a melody line that goes on top of the riff that was the opening riff. And it just totally changed my perception. I was like, wow, that's a great track. And uh, one of the favorites of, of uh, the people also that mixed the record, uh, of Colin Richardson and, and Chris Glency, they were like, man, what a great song. Yeah. And we almost threw, threw it off the, the record because we thought it, it was crap. <laughs> oh, wow. See, folks, there you go. The, yeah. the untold stories of songs. That's why I asked that question because <laughs> it's amazing on, on – how some songs were meant to be, then you hear it on the B side and you, and you actually hear what came out from the B side and you're like, Oh my God, that's two totally different songs. Yeah. Or, or sometimes uh, when you're in the shoes of the artist, you don't, you don't know. You, you, you think a song is going to be the, 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 the is for the record or the single. And then it ends up being the song that you didn't think it would be. And it's because you don't see it yourself, but others see it. Yeah. Like once, once things are done. Yeah. Now, man, you you produced all fourteen albums. Is this something that you like to have the control over, you guys? Or we we started really uh, at what I would say uh, punkish with the DIY attitude mm-hmm. when we, uh, at the beginning of the band, and uh, we wanted to do everything ourselves. Like, oh, we'll we'll record our own records, we'll manage the band ourselves, we'll print our own merch and all that. And we that's kind of the attitude we had at the beginning, and and. Uh, the producing, I, I I was doing it, and I was a passion of mine recording uh, recording music. I I worked in a, a pretty uh, no world renowned studio in Canada called the Victor Studio in Montreal, and I, I got started there. I learned everything there is to know about recording there by big guys, and um, it's something that I always love to do. And I, and the guys in the band feel comfortable working this way. We have a a method of doing things that works for us. And it's also about keeping the sound of the band uh, intact because we don't have an outside uh, person coming in and, and changing everything. So it's pretty much we're, we're on our own and we, we uh, keep complete control of the, of the product of the music, the, the arrangements and the song themselves and the stuff like the guitar sound and the bass sound, the drums are very typical for Cataclysm. We, they, they, they need to come out a certain way. Otherwise our, our fans are going to be like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, like it's just, uh, something we always did. And I don't think we want to change that part. And it's, it's not an ego trip. It's just how we do stuff for, for us. It works and it's a good recipe. So we want to, keep doing it like that and so also something like when you it's easy for me to like tell the singer or, or the bass player or a drummer like uh, look dude that that track suck do it again <laughs> and uh, so, sometimes like and most of the times we know we look at each other and he, he'll he'll be like no that was that was bad like let's do it again <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that but sometimes you bring in a stranger and it's kind of weird to listen to to someone tell you what's good and what's not when you've been in a band for 30 years and you know and deep in your gut what's what's the right thing to do. So, uh, no, it's a, I, I, we, we love being self-produced and I think it's going to be uh, this way for, for, for till the end of our career. Now, you mentioned you guys brought in legendary 
Colin Richardson on this album for mixing and mastering and things like that. Let me mm-hmm. ask you this about him. Was it crucial for you guys to have him? How important was to get him on this album for you all? Since the last few albums, we started outsourcing the, the, the mixing and mastering just because uh, being part of the band, uh, sometimes when we come when it comes down to mixing, uh, there's there's there was always some some internal fights involved about like uh, who wants their instrument a certain way like I want my drums louder I want my vocals louder and then like you keep pushing things up and up and then and like I'm the guy sitting in the chair like kind of meddling everything and I thought for that reason for our band having an external mixer uh, was the the right idea so. Uh, we we keep producing the songs and the the recording ourselves, but we we have the this extra set of ears that comes in at the end and puts it all together in a way that everybody's happy. And uh, Colin Richardson was, for me personally, when I started my career as an engineer, he was one of the guys that looked up to. Uh, I would compare my work against his because he was the reference in my eyes of, of what sounds good uh, for metal, and. Um, I had no idea that would be interested in, in working with us, uh, let alone come back and producing a record, like w- mixing a record after being retired. Because Colin's in his sixties now. Oh wow! And uh, he was totally into it, and I think now he wants to work, do more work because he loved it, and he kind of uh, got back to his <laughs> former <laughs> passion, I guess, or bored boredom of being retired, and he's like, "Man, I got to do more of these." <laughs> but I'm I'm, re- I'm really hoping that he sticks around and that he will do our next record as well. Cause it was really nice to work with him and he was very uh, professional. And the other guy that, uh, that works with him too, uh, Chris Clancy was also great dude to work with. And I, I recommend to any bands to, to, if you want a great mixer that that guy was phenomenal and did a fantastic job. And he's the guy that he worked on uh, some, some stuff from Slipknot, all the early machine that records, uh, yeah, bullet for my Valentine, some Trivium, Carcass artwork, uh, so many metal classics, uh, kind of old corps. And uh, I was, uh, we're, we were happy to have him work on our sound, and he did, he did great. Corey Taylor, get on my show, be on my podcast. Yeah, <laughs> come on, come on, Corey Taylor. <laughs> How was working with artist Blake Armstrong on this man? Did he did he get it right? Did he knock it out of the ballpark for you guys? Uh, yes, uh, I think. When when uh, they first started uh, putting ideas on the table for the artwork, uh, they were talking a lot about like bringing bringing back this beast that we used to have on the older records, and um, I wasn't totally into the idea because I I'm a type of guy I like to look at the future and, and move on and do something new, and I, I don't like to rehash old ideas. And uh, I mean, the beast was great because he was here representing the imagery of the band for an, uh, an uh, era that was really su- successful for our band. but um, so, And people were telling telling us, like, bring it back. I think it would be a cool idea. But when Blake did it and he showed, showed us the sketch, I was blown away and I completely changed my mind. I was like, okay, this is the, the artwork. It, it has to go this way. It's perfect. So he did a fantastic job and... and uh, it, he's a great artist. He, we we saw some of his work that he did for In Flames, and and uh, we, we thought it was a good choice for for this album. And it ties in everything nicely, like the the album title Unconquered with the Beast coming back with all this extreme uh, heavy music that we wrote, and it's just a perfect combo of everything. JF, what do you hope everyone takes away or message you hope they hear while listening to any of Cataclysm's music in general, man, from any album whatsoever? What do you hope that they get from your guys' music? Well, what I would say this is you're listening to a band that started in high school, four guys in Canada that had a passion for music, and we met in detention rooms in high school, <laughs> and we started this band out of, out of pure love for music, and somehow managed to make a career out of this and and uh and uh, m- built a strong underground army of fans and uh there's a long history of this band and we went through uh, m- many different uh, eras of music we started uh when we started there was no uh, gps in the car or internet <laughs> it was it was before electricity basically and uh 
we did everything to tape, and then we saw the 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 the, the big changes in technology for the recording, big changes in technology in the gear and the way music gets promoted, distributed. We we saw it all, and um, when we go back to the discography, it's it's almost like a you can see you can feel the energy of the bands right through everything. We, we never really changed that much. Uh, we, we we just stayed true to who we are and we we are um we are kind of uh, our message behind uh, everything basically is to, to stay strong focused and we try to uplift uh, people with our music and and we talk about stuff that uh, matters to us even still today as uh, i'd say like uh, adult kind of metal as we're all in our mid 40s now and uh, but all, we still love the, the 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 music and our message is uh, is relevant to uh, to to listen to at any age and uh, we're, it's not like we're trying to write lyrics that only applies to teenager or, or things like that and basically we uh, we care about our message we care about our craft or instruments the playing our music and uh, I think it transpires through everything but I'll I'll let you guys be the judge hopefully. Check it out, and hopefully you, you like it. What can fans expect on a show from the Mighty Cataclysm who have not got to see you guys live as of yet? What are they going to get when all this gets back to normal and come and see you all Man, live? They're, they're going to get a, a punch in the face <laughs> 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 because because we're 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 so uh, ready, and it's all it's, it's almost like you you when you feel like you're held back and you want to let loose and you can't. <laughs> and, yeah. and uh, I think uh, we're going to be really uh, fresh and, and ready to eat at the road whenever things get back to normal. We, we're going to be so happy to be there and, and enjoying playing live that uh, I think you're going to feel it. And we're going to try to cover a lot of the new album, of course, but we want to play a lot of classics from all the heroes of the band and, and, uh, and push this, uh, the, 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 the show to uh, to the max max capacity of uh, impact, <laughs> or I, I guess that's the best way I can put it. Is there a country that stands out or shocks you that Cataclysm gets support from, or Cataclysm's music gets played in? Possibly has there been an area that's kind of stuck out for you? Maybe. Well, I'd say um, the old uh, the old mi- mainland Europe has been one of the reason why we survived all these years because. We have so many uh, fans there just from that area that it generates enough money to to make us live uh, as musicians. So um, that's very important to us because they were the first ones that gave us a shot for a record deal. Uh, um, Nuclear Blast Records that started in Germany and in, in Donsdorf, they, they, got, they gave us the first record deal and it kind of... The band kind of blew up there for whatever reason. I don't know, but it's it's like our our area of core supporters there. But we love touring the world. Uh, it, it was really awesome to go to places like South Africa, uh, Japan, Australia, South America is great. We we love going down there. There's crazy fans down there, and touring the states we, we love. I mean, I live here. I I, uh, I moved to Dallas ten years ago. And uh, Mauricio lives in in uh, Orlando, in Florida, and and uh, we we call this country home, and we love touring here. And uh, sometimes it's uh, it's harder because there's, it's a big country to cover, so you don't get to go to every single city of every state. We get, we always get those messages of people saying like, "Why don't you come play our city?" But it's uh, it's hard to. Uh, make it work across the board but uh we try our best to come to come and say hello uh, at least once or twice every album cycle and um we're, we're hoping we can do this uh, soon again i know when you was younger you had a lot of music of course but did you have that go-to album or song that just let you escape or made you think things were going to get better or made you feel like you were accepted uh did you have that possibly maybe yeah i mean uh, i had on my album that uh, was like the album for for me for many years and even now when i listen to it, it brings me back to when i was 12 and and freaking out on on the record and and uh, that was the the seven son of a uh, seven son from iron maiden oh nice and 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 it's actually the first 
gig I saw live, my my parents brought me to the show because they, they knew I was such a fan. And when the when they came through town, I got I got to see them live, and I was like, oh, I got the re- revelation there. As I, I asked them, I need a, I need a guitar. I need to play guitar after seeing that. And, but the the record Seven Son of a Seven Son is very special for me. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Cataclysm's new 14th full-length studio album entitled Unconquered, September 25th via Nuclear Blast Records. You want to get out and pick that up. So, JF, how can folks stay in touch with you guys, buy some merchandise, tour dates when this all gets back to normal, this new album? How can they do that? Uh, We have our website, uh, cataclysm.ca. That's probably everything's there. But, of course, all the socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that. Uh, oh, I think all the band members, we we each have our own personal Instagram. You, you, you can get in touch personally with with us there. And uh, we're the kind of down to earth guys that will we'll reply to people. We're not uh, <laughs> we're not hiding behind our computers or anything like that. So uh, <laughs> just <laughs> check it out. And if you want to uh, hear the music, uh, any streaming services as it. Uh, or if you want to support the band and, and, and buy a physical copy of the album, that, that's super cool too. You can do that through our, our website or the Nuclear Blast website. Before I let you go, good sir, would you care to do a promo for my show? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, this is JF from Cataclysm, and you're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up. You only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Hour podcast. Get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link, YouTube link, and all the links that we are associated with all across the platforms. Trust me, we're just about on every platform that they are. Also, get out and pick up Cataclysm's 14th new full-length studio album entitled Unconquered. That's going to be released September 25th via Nuclear Blast Records. So get out and pick that up. Jeff, man, always a pleasure having you on here, and, and I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck, and uh, keep it, keep knocking it out of the ballpark for us. Thank you so much for having me. Mm-hmm. 